There we go. Hello. Hello. Long time no see, strangers. <laughs> How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Uh, my name is Fiona. I use she, her pronouns, and I run What Am I Rolling, which is a twice monthly RPG one shot podcast. And sometimes I do Too Long Didn't Read Tabletop RPGs. Now, it's been a while. <laughs> Over a month, to be exact. Uh, yes, because I went on holiday for quite a lot of September, and I just was a little bit too busy and I didn't feel comfortable streaming from my setup uh, at my partner's place uh, so that's the person I went to visit uh, and then since I've been back I've just been busy 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 unfortunately uh, with, with good stuff but also with some boring stuff as well so I've not had a chance to actually just sit down and do one of these things until today when my uh, oh, sorry the music is a little bit loud in my ears <laughs> very doom heavy as you can imagine um, until tonight, where I had some plans, I was going to actually do some teaching, and then uh, that all fell through. Uh, let me tell you, there's nothing worse than sitting in front of <laughs> sitting in front of a Zoom window that you can't access because you don't have the passcode for an hour. <laughs> so I just thought, well, I could just sit here, uh, you know, obviously cancel the class. That's all, that's all fine. Um, I could sit here and maybe work on some prep for my D&D game tomorrow. I could probably do some reading uh, myself with some non some fiction stuff that I've been trying to get back into. I could do uh, some just general sort of like looking at RPGs in general. But I thought, wait, why don't I do one on stream? Because I enjoy doing that. I've really enjoyed doing these um, these streams in the past. And I thought, why not get back into it slowly? So maybe I won't be able to do as much as... I did previously. I think I was averaging between like three streams a week. Um, I might have to do a little bit here and there because October is busy for me. You know, clang. Ooh, suddenly she's popular. Um, but where I can, I thought I would do one. I'm going to see if I can do a few more this week because I actually do miss doing this. Uh, so today, getting all that out of the way, today we are looking at Mookborg or Mookborg, depending on your pronunciation. I know a lot of us... Uh, US and UK people say Morkborg because uh, it has a nice sort of rhyme to it. Now, if I can, so it's it took me like good 20 minutes to find uh, to reset up OBS, right? And I was like, for the le longest time, the worst bit was like, I can't find the chat. <laughs> I have found the chat now, but I, um, I'm i going to move over to my main screen. So that is Morkborg. Yes, you would have probably recognize it. It is one of the most iconic RPGs in the last. I'd say five years. I think it was 2018, although it's going to tell me as soon as I get into it uh, what it actually looks like. But let's go first to the website, which uh, hasn't worked. Of course, it hasn't worked. That would be too funny if it actually did work. There it is. And of course, I've not. Of course, I've not set it up right. There we go. Look at look at that. Morkborg.com. Actually, you know what? I should actually do. Uh, I did do this before. Nightbot. Nightbot. Please send us the links in the chat. So yes, Morkborg. Um, it is iconic. You have uh, Johan Noor, he is a pretty famous uh, artist uh, that is pretty much used for any, I'd say, alternative RPGs for Free League. Uh, so you've probably seen his work in, uh, obviously, Morkborg, uh, you've seen a little bits of it in, uh, what was the other game, uh, Bastion Land, when I got a re-release of that, uh, and it's sort of really uh, noticeable in that as well and obviously in all the other Morkborg supplements as well so I thought why not check this out because spoilers I actually do need to have a look at the rules um, in the upcoming weeks for um, I don't know something called uh, MCM Comic Con so let's go into the website oh maybe let's uh, oh give me contact by the game can I oh it's one of those ones uh, oh there we go oh I need to make the window smaller don't I ah <sighs> one second guys all right doom metal album oh there uh, Hang on, I know, I know, I know what to do. Ready? Dehance. I'd like to dehance. De. Oh no, stop it, Fiona. Why would you. That does no. Oh, there we go. I was going to say, that does nothing. It's done everything. Great, so we've got here. Da -da -da -da. It is a doom metal album of a game. A spike flail to the face. Light on rules, heavy on everything else. Amazing. And yeah, you got eight Ennies when it originally came out. So best writing, best layout and design, product of the year, best digital aid and accessory. Uh, it's got a cracking uh, one for that. One day all will blacken and burn. Oh, do, 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 do. So already you can see from the website. So let me get rid of that bar. You can already see the cool spreads we've got here. Of all the different, like, look at that. We'll look at this in a lot more detail when we do the uh, thing. What a great website, by the way. That, that I'm, all I'm doing is scrolling down, and instantly it's just so cool. So, it says here, if I, uh, 
cool website, terrible for streaming, tiny letters. Let's see if I can enhance this a little bit. There we go. Do, 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 do. All right, so. Walkborg is a complete game in the OSR genre. It can that can be played at as is or be picked apart for use in your own homebrew. The rules are easily made compatible with most editions of the world's largest role-playing game. I wonder who that could be. Uh, within the book, you will find a brief look at this dying world from the two-headed basilisk's gothic cathedral in Galgenbeck uh, and, the blood, and the blood countess Athenella's limestone palace to the fields of death in the Gravenso uh, Gravenstock and the barren wastelands of Kyrgyz. Uh, the calendar of Necrubel that decides the speed of the world's demise. 20 occult powers that let you bend reality and just as many magical catastrophes for when you disastrously fail. Disastrously fail, even. Uh, in case you're new here to uh, Too Long Didn't Read, my pronunciations are going to be completely shot. I will say as well, latest book of D&D, uh, Planescape, no pronunciations, I see you. Mm, Cross-making. Uh, Optional rules, which will bring more depth to the game. Omens that let you turn bad luck into a slightly better one. Into a slightly better one. Classes with unique traits and quirks, and tables that will bring you life to bring life into your character. Uh, Twelve creatures to be murdered by. <laughs> Classic. Uh, game master's tools such as tables for corpse plundering, occult treasures, adventure sparks, dungeoneering, dungeon generator, and other devilry. And an introduction de uh, dungeon crawl scenario, Rot Black Sludge, where you investigate a forgotten part of the Shadow King's enormous ruined palace. Cannibal warlocks, poison peddlers from beyond the void, and hungry gutworms await. Oh. Uh, so Morkborg is constructed by Pele Nilsson and Johan Noor. The game is published by Free League, uh, public, uh, Free League Publishing and is available in Swedish and English. The English text is edited and cursed by Patrick Stewart. Not that Patrick Stewart. And what I say as well, on the website, she says, moving. Oh, no, spoilers. Oh, what have you done, you silly box? Oh, God, professional. Am I not? Uh, here in the Mortborg website. Oh, it's because I've... God, you can tell. You can tell it's been, it's been quite an after... It's been quite an evening. <laughs> right, leave it there. So, yeah, so you can get... Uh, obviously, there's different, different variations on the Mortborg website. You can also get the ultra-minimalist ones, where it's just the text. Because, let me tell you, we'll, we'll look at the main core book. Um, but it can be quite hard to read. There's a, it's a lot, it's a, there's a lot going on, and it is, I think, first and foremost, like an art piece, a graphic thing of beauty or monstrosity, depending on how you see it. Um, but it might be very hard to read for some people. But what I will say that they have done a text-only version called the Bare Bones Edition, which I have as well. So if we, if, we, if I'm struggling to read it, I'm going to just flip over to the other one as well. Uh, you can also download some character sheets there as well. I'm going to just fix this goddamn box because it's going to gonna really annoy me do, 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 do. gotta fix the box there we go no that's even worse Fiona you one day one day one day I will be I will be a streamer <laughs> I will stream there you go so yeah so there's two different types there uh, again one in English one in Swedish uh, crypt sheets in case you run out of the regular sheet, or just really dislike it for whatever, here's a different version. That's very cool. There's the ba bare bones version. Let me move this over. Uh, curious but uncertain. Want to peek into the uh, into the abyss before taking the plunge? It's free. That's the main thing. It is free. No art except for the cover image and just text without fen fancy fonts or exper experimental graphic designs. But just as miserable. Great. Then there's the official character creator as well. So. Like this is the thing I love about uh, this particular RPG, is that it's rules light, everything's great. And if you're like, oh, I just need a character, do it like that. Because I'll be honest, from what I know of this game, uh, your character could be gone like that, could die very, very easily. So it all depends. Uh, if you need more dungeons and stuff, here's some more dungeons. Uh, dungeon official dungeon generator, incredible, and oh, monster generator as well. Fantastic, very good. And of course, there are here. I've got some other. Um, yes, they have got a really good third party, well not third party, but you know, third party license so that communities can create content and be able to sell that content as well. I'm a massive fan of those, of just those licenses in general. Um, 
And it sounds like, again, I've not dabbled it in Morkborg creation myself, but obviously my co-host Hamilton for uh, upcoming MCM stuff, but also in general, has made a lot of Morkborg stuff. And he, again, this is all hearsay, I know, but he was saying that the community is so friendly and it's just so... They just want you to succeed. And you know what? I'm here for that as well. God, there's a comic as well. Incredible. So there you go. So, oh, and there's merch. Gotta look. I, you know me, I love merch. Um, don't know if I'd wear one of these. Oh, uh, in, <laughs> just because I, I don't know, maybe a bit more controversial. So there you go. So that's what so the in, you know, ins and outs of it as you look at it. Um, yes. So yeah, let's just tell you what. Let's ignore my uh, failures on Chrome and let's go just straight to the actual book. So the book itself. Uh, is with the full art so the original Morkborg book with the yellow and black cover is uh, 96 pages in the PDF. The bare bones if I go to it there, it's only 76 so you're still getting quite a lot uh, like within the book the art's not taking up a lot of it so that's pretty cool I think like it's like it's you know very similar in that style um, and yeah what a cracking cover. You know I did see um, Johan Noor uh, posting about his design process. He actually has a Kickstarter out just now about his artwork, which uh, I don't know if it's still running. Again, October, September's been a very busy month for me. Um, but he was talking about designing, why he, des why not just him, but why they came up with these, the yellow cover and the black f um, font and the back, black typography and the, the image for the front. And it's just like, he took a screenshot of uh, Drive Through RPG like the top 100 or something like that and Morkborg was like really high up and he goes this is why and Morkborg was the only one that stood out in a sea of browns and and like dark greens and dark reds and the yellow just was just so eye-catching and that's what I love about it is that it just catches your eye instantly you will see this in the shop you will see this on the shelf easily because uh, that's what it is it's supposed to catch your eye straight away which I love uh, okay, so first page, and of course, as always, enhance. So first of all, uh, I think this was when I when I originally read this. Um, I think this was the first time I'd ever seen uh, so many tables on one page. Uh, which I, it's not that's not what I mean to say. It, like a table on the inside covers without knowing what the game was. I know lots of games do do that, by the way. But just I just thought that was really cool. So here we've got. Uh, names you can get straight away a table for names so a six uh, a six and a d8 for those ones you've got uh, d10 a court treasures so you need to just find randomly uh, a gray ring a finger uh, a finger width wide all that passes through is obliterated terrifying that's what I like is that again all these things like a note explains one taste from this Famine spoon means death from slow starvation. It's just so much flavour in such a small like sentence or two, like a little paragraph about these things. Um, here, number four, he rolled the image of a being in this, I can't say that word, mal malevolent, m accurate mirror shows only the shameful truth of their soul. Uh, a black pearl. If dropped to darkness, it rolls towards the nearest exit today. Oh, I love that. That sounds like a great treasure. Uh, silver bird cage slays whatever is placed behind its bars slowly over one long night. That which is killed reanimates twice as strong as a raging, uncontrollable undead. Amazing. Very, very cool. And then we've also got traps and devilry, which is a D12. Uh, well-dressed corpse, booby-trapped. Uh, a scorpion-filled basket poised to fall. A uh, lock trapped with a vial of poison gas. Evil urns release cold ghosts. Oh, incredible. And then what the weather's like. <laughs> it is. Uh, it is as black as night or soup-thick mist. What a, what a great collection of tables we have on the first page. And then another one, uh, a D66. Corpse plundering looting. Uh, 11 to 16. The remains of something worthless crumbles in your hand. Ooh. I like that one. I just saw that one that caught my eye. 35. Note. Note with PC's names. One is crossed out. Uh, bond. A local potente? Potente. <laughs> uh, owns the holder of a sizable amount. 
the water of life. Heals 1d8. Test toughness. Uh, the, oh, I'm guessing it's some sort of like resistance save. 10 or go blind. Highly alcoholic. Mm -hmm. I should actually say at the top of this, uh, this <laughs> tabletop RPG, um, too long didn't read stream, uh, there may be mature themes. <laughs> You can tell it's been a while since I've done this. So yeah, there might be some uh, content stuff in here that you know might be not appropriate if you're watching this or if you're not feeling up to it, just come back when you're ready. But I would say like, again, with the bare bones edition, you can just read the text and go from there essentially. Uh, and then at the top, we've got the result in silver. Awesome, got some money there as well. There you go. I'm glad I did the, I'm glad I did the warnings just before the image. <laughs> and then we've got some credits as always. Here's the play testers, the proof readings. Uh, the original translation by no Johan Noor, uh, Christine Plogforce, who is, uh, and Carl Nibleus, they are the two folks who are behind uh, Death in Space, which is another uh, free league project, uh, which we, we should probably cover on this at some point because it is pretty good. Johan Eriksson, uh, there's a couple of free league people, I can say, oh, Thomas. Oh. Tom, Tomas, sorry, uh, uh, fr lots of free league stuff. Clearly interested there. Ah, twenty twenty. God, it feels like it's been much older than that. It's only three years old. Um, Mortborg. That's incredible. I guess to be fair, when you when you launched in the pandemic, <laughs> everything feels like yesterday and a decade ago. <laughs> so, so there we go. And then the full title. Yeah, pff, roll credits. Pele Nielsen, who did the original text, ideas and game design, then Johan Noor, uh, graphic design and artwork, plus a couple of domain images. Uh, that's the other thing I'd say as well, Johan Noor, he is a big proponent of using um, public domain images. He says, like, you know, going onto those sort of library uh, assets, you know, like, I think, again, this is a, it's been a while since I've interviewed him and I've interviewed him twice, um, but he's saying that there's so many library databases that are full with uh, public domain artwork that you can just take and, and uh, make into your own thing and you'll see in this particular book he does it it's such success, ugh, he does it to such an extent that it is just it's it looks incredible I he yeah I, I wish I was good at graphic design honestly all right so let's oh, let's move out a little bit so you can see the image so a dark castle of some sort and then some text okay Uh, the wind from the west, from the sundered land, rot rides it, and the stench of blood. Cursed. Mm, oh, is that Make Malkers? This is where we go to the, the bare bones edition. <laughs> That's not what. Cursed Walker. There you go, Cursed Walker. I'm glad I got both. Cursed Walker. Will you travel there? To the valley of the unfortunate undead? Our young ones are taken by the child thief, Tergor, known for his vile crimes and alchemy of flesh. Distance, distances shift, paths between the places warp, as if this pale, lightless world possessed a will and bitter life. Its mercy curdled to wrath over a too long age. Who are you? The grave robber with silver glitterings, glittering between the cracked fingernails. The mystic who would bend the world mis world's miserable heart away to it from its inevitable end. Most likely, it makes little difference. No one has seen the sun in years. The old care more for sacrifice and god offerings and their bawling spawn. Doomsayers are proven right time and again and embraced by hidden powers maybe it's best to surrender to trust your own instinct and skill rather than the whim of the dice before all is drowned in welcome silence life locked in and failing in a dark fort mm. what was written must be uh, thank you, Christopher Hoffman. The Black Crown of Cripple uh, King. Oh, sorry. The Black Crown of the Cripple King in Occult Treasures looks like a fan fantastic version of, of a cursed traffic. Let's have a look at it. Oh. Do, 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 do. Thanks for pointing that out. Otherwise, I'm just going to skip over everything. Do, do, do. King. Do, 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 do. 
as, there we go. So number nine, a black crown of the Cripple King. Wearing this crooks your body so you become very aware that you and every creature within 100 yards gains plus 10 to attack rolls, but minus 10 to defense rolls. Rolls that go above 20 count as crits and below one as fumbles. The worn crown can only be removed in the pale light of a full moon. You're right. You're right, Christopher. That is absolutely cracking. Oh, so good. Yeah, do call out if you see anything, by the way, because I will just, just be like, do 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 going uh, to and from. But yeah, I love that. All right, what else we got? Uh, Anuk Slauger, Slauger. <sighs> pronunciation's my worst. Uh, monk of the Cretan Order, encountered the Basilisk Verhu in the year 565 and set down that creature's whispered prophecies. These lost texts came to be known as the Nameless Scriptures. 300 years later, whilst working on a new cathedral, the two-headed basilisk, an, un an orthodox branch of the Creighton Order, uncovered Schlager's tomb and with it, the scriptures. Since then, all events described within have come to pass. The prophecies are absolutely factually true and have thus supplanted all other scripture. Around this cathedral has grown Gal oh God, Gal Galgenbeck, Galgenbeck, the greatest city that ever was. The basilisks are two and two-headed. The four heads have argued for hundreds of years. Verhu predicts the uh, inexorable, uh, inexorable annihilation, and, and since he's always right, has become utterly full of himself. <laughs> he is also the head worshipped most. If you could learn the codes of the apocalypse, perhaps the right offerings might advert it. Verhu loves his position and hungers for temples to be raised in his name. Known. Must be known. That's from the other page, right? <laughs> Three. When the world was but water, dust and clouds thick with plague fat flies, came she, the first of the basilisks. From the cracks of Berg Bergen crypt, she crawled. She bears the head of denial, Lucy, who looks up and down. Yet all shall pa and yet all shall be well. Her twin, Ark, head of deception, claims to be the first prophet of truths, now prostituted by Verhu. Few have ever seen her, the oldest, but many walk her twin paths. She spawned many since the dawn of time, their conceptions not without agony. All were cast down the cliffs of Bergen crypt. Only he survived. Down in the valley of the unfortunate undead, his eyes locked, uh, locked upon the mountain's peak, he spits out curses upon his evil mother. The head, Gorg, is bitter, rank with envy, that only his twin Verhu knows the, door, the damned truth. Time and time again his prophecies are brought to be. The piles of gold, gold, ri oh, gold gift riches from his faithful Tita, uh, from his faithful Tita and Slide, so tall are they. Whoa, look at this, see, look at that, that image. Incredible. Four. The, the world dies even now. Reality decays. Truth becomes dream and dream truth. Cracks grow in the once stable structures of the past, allowing things misshapen and vile to worm through, emerging in, in today's wane light. The known world closes in, bound to the west by the massive virgin crypt. Cur yeah with its catacombs and ice cape peaks and surrounded by the endless sea to the north, south and east. Many have ploughed the waves furrow in search of new lands. They all return against their will, alive or dead. <laughs> hey AJ, hope you're doing all right. AJ on, on Twitch, rude of them to put a photo of me hung over in this book. Hey. <laughs> I think we've all felt like that at some point. <laughs> Hope you're doing well, AJ. Uh, let's move down. And yes, this is uh, on page 
uh, it's page. Yeah, it is page eight. That's awful. It's like, look at this map. So again, this is very. Uh, I again, I don't. I don't want to be a person who is an expert on Johan Noor, but it's very typical Johan Noor sort of imagery. So you can see there's bits of it put together from different pictures, different uh, typo typography, just a general set in general, which really just ca encapsulates the feel of this uh, of this place. I wonder if I go to the bare bones edition, what the map looks like in there. If there, I don't think there is a map. No, there is not a map in here. That makes sense. There's no images in the bare bones one. But uh, yeah, so we can see. What can we see here? If I take a look, see in. Um, oh, she says. <laughs> so there's the the capital, so to speak. We've got a few. There's the Valley of the Unfortunates and the big sort of mountains, Bergen's crypt. I think that's how you say it. Who knows? And the endless sea that surrounds it. It's almost like a big island. You've got the wasteland and Ondar here. Rum, I think that's the name of that river there. Next to, I want to say, is that Grift? Is that the language there? I'm sure we'll find out as well. Not too bad. Oh, well, I'm glad you're here, my friend. I'm glad you're here. I hope you're having a good Sunday. All right, next. All right, let's look into this. So, it's so a lot of this book is most, I, I don't want to say it's mostly setting. That's not right. I think the first part of this book is setting, which is always good. And again, apologies for pronunciations because they're not going to be right. Uh, Galgenbeck in the land of Tuvland is the, uh, yeah, is the greatest city that ever was. No king or queen rules in Galgenbeck, but an arch priestess, Yosefan, uh, Yosefan Migol, deep beneath the cathedral of the two-headed basilisk, in the cool black chamber crossed by shards of light, lies her throne. Yosefan old but still young, commoners gossip that she concludes with the god oh, Necrubel, 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 who gave her eternal life. Necrubel, the shadow that covers all. Necrubel, the melancholy, crop failure, conflict and war. It is said he whispered the apocalyptic prophecies in Verhu's ear. As time grows ever shorter, the two-headed basilisks, basilisks become ever more desperate in their recruitment. To take one's own life is considered sinful cowardice. The road to salvation lies through mortification of the flesh. The apocalypse is met with eyes wide open. Only then can the soul be allowed passage to the shimmering fields. Heretics and oh God, apostates are hunted down and corrected in public, and at length by the Inquisition. Oh, I'm going to double check what that is. Hang on, this is not fair. Uh, <laughs> ah, I see, I see, I see, okay. In uh, in Svetland also lies Sorkosk. The forest seems lately to spread unnaturally fast. Past tangle and wind is and wind in the overgrown gloom, leading wanderers astray. Far in the depths of, ah, Sarskas. Oh, maybe what's it? Sarkash. Uh, Kash? No, Sarkash. Sarkash. Always where one least expects to find it, in a halo of dying trees, is Graventosk, a truly ancient cemetery filled with mausoleums, blank-eyed cherubs, stagnant fountains, play picts, pits and ordinary graves but it hasn't grown warmer but hasn't it grown warmer in this usually cold place do you hear the french frank ugh, frank frantic I'll get there eventually frantic scratching the air feels heavy stale and hard to breathe rising over graven tosk uh, graven tosk is rage rising over play like rage rising over pain is the palace of the shadow king a gothic black castle like a mirror to the ca cathedral of the two-headed basilisks in galgenbeck most of the palace lies in crumbling ruins home to the unfortunate sh souls sheltering beneath its broken halls none dare dream what might lie underneath oh under the rubble ca covered under the rubber covered catacombs and cellars. Tunnels sprawl beneath like writhing roots, digging deeper into the cold earth like cancerous veins. The inner wing stand, still stands, acting as the home of the Shadow King, 
a being obscured by ritual. The slaves of the other, no, the slaves of the servants of the courtiers of the king come forth and do his will. What a cracking image that is. The title is hereditary. Sons are always born to the Shadow King. It's whispered princes of that line disguise themselves as ordinary men wandering the ruins engaged in games and tricking travellers, multiplying the miseries of their people. Grift. From ages past, Grift grew upon an eastern peninsula of the Endless Sea, cut, off, cut from the world by a bottomless moor. Oh, cut from the world cut from the world by the bottomless moor so that must oh that will be the the river not rum as i stupidly said <laughs> the thriving city state can be oh, can re be reached only by the three bridges of such might and oh god cyclopean yes yeah, cyclopean cyclop <laughs> i'm trying to say Cyc cyclopean size it is said that only enslaved giants could have raised them grift was once a place of harmony and the light, and light of reason, a shelter from the plague-wracked, war-torn world beyond. But the world turns, and even more, even the moor can't protect Griff from its inevitable fall. King Sigfum, the kind, is mocked in the street. Much of Griff has fallen into disrepair as vile creatures begin crawling from the dried, cracked earth. Each night, the bridges scream and roar like great ships grinding upon rocks. Sigfram is defeated. He knows the end is near, believes the prophecies of Verhu, and so kindly and calmly prepares his people for death. Huge parchments dot the streets and calendars of despair, marking each correct preparation and time and, and its time. Each day a leaf is turned, and when the last page comes, Sigfum will march his people to the cliff Terion, Terion yep, to fulfill what is written. Terion, a, a thousand meters of vertical rock with a raging sea biting at its base. The Inquisition of the Two-Headed Basilisk is not too keen on the heretical suicide scheme that of Sigfum the kind. <laughs> Pretty good. Oh, so far, like, again, it's such a... All this writing, it... Um, it's definitely something good, and if I was putting together a game of Mortbook, I would definitely want to recite this, hopefully with the correct pronunciations, uh, to the players, to get them that sense of feeling, the sense of almost like the almost like the religiousness of the words, if you see what I mean. what it is like almost a prophecy, almost like that sort of like nine for the nine for the uh, humans, you know, what's it what's it? Uh, Three for the elves, five for the dwarf lords, and nine nine rings for the leaders of men, that sort of thing. Anyway. Kurgos. Desolation rolls over Kurgos like a frost barren wind. The lawless and forlorn trek across its ice racked expanse, crawling over its plains or cowering in the cracks in the cracked earth to flee the blood countess Athena Athenlina. Athenlia. We'll never know. <laughs> North, where the wind is born, lies. Oh Lord, uh, Al Alains, mm. Alains, a storm-pierced spire city of black glass. Within stands a castle like a waterfall of white stone, the throne of Athena. -la. That's not how you say it. Or An, the, A, Li A. She is as pale as her castle's walls, as, youth, as youthful as a drop of melting ice. Some say she is eternally young. The girls cry the names of the knight who sought her hand, a reminder that suitors and signs of her age disappear in conjunction. But who listens to a gull? And in Kurgus, even gulls freeze in the cold that rolls from the dreams of the countess. Dreams of her unending youth. Uh, AJ says, Anthelia. That, yeah, that's probably exactly right. Thank you. Anthelia. Okay. Thankfully, it's come up right. <laughs> Anthelia's ambivalence. Oh, God. <laughs> ambivalence. Anthelia's Anthelia is well aware, is well aware time is short. Necroses. 
necrosis uh, bur burden her. Why is everything so pale, so cold? She cries out for colour or warmth. She drains the world both of both. She drains the world of both with every glance, touch, and breath. Those who would bring her vibrant life are promised great rewards. All fear to do so. Uh, excuses are made, explanations found. The feelings of the Countess are fragile. Her powers absolute. God, someone's writing about me in this book. <laughs> Court life entails grey opulence, excitement, and fear. Oh, look at that image. That's that's the one I've seen on a on a t-shirt, and maybe that's the one I would have. Absolutely cracking. Yes, ten out of ten. No notes. <laughs> the Western Kingdom, also called the Wasteland, in the songs of the simple and rhymes of the poor, once honed the peace and wealth when Lake Onda. Onda, sorry, Gift, gifted fish and the river trade thrived. Now, terror and despotism, despo, despotism mm, stalk the land. In the secret citadel of the sad but gaudy city of, oh lord, no. <laughs> it's another king's schemes. King Fafum the fourth. Schlegwig. <laughs> Paranoid, fat, and increasingly mad. Uh, also, who's writing about me in this book? <laughs> uh, he is consumed with psychosis and invisible fears. One day, one day, I'm just going to have... We had someone on the podcast recently, um, Mark, uh, who was a voiceover actor, and he told us about this amazing uh, software where you could put the whole script in and it would find those hard-to-speak words and then have the pronunciation guides next to them. Oh God, where is where is that now? <laughs> Obsessed with the prophecies of Verhu, the king raids and invades houses and villages, barns and temples. Nowhere and no one is safe, especially the poor. Taxed into starvation, the contents of their larders and storehouses are count are carted off by f uh, Fahum's Fahum's men. Mm. A, f a place few wish to speak of is the Valley of the Unfortunate Dead. Rumours whisper the basilisk. He, uh, the ru rumours whisper the basilisk. He is coiled within its crypts, a site infrequently survived. Lies and legends enshroud this valley, obscuring any truths. Peddlers' tales say the soil, the very air, is lethal, bringing a sleepless, stumbling death. There is no clean fate, but a slow growing. A fathomless despair weighing down the traveller with poisoned memories and dark thoughts until the spark of life is mutated into a mournful, hopeless undeath. Others claim lost wanderers can fall and find themselves in the realm of the dead when the black soil hungrily drags them under the earth. You know what? I'm gonna in let's enhance a little bit so I can see. Those without hope travel here seeking an end to pain golden afterlife beyond this dark and ruined world. They gather in suicide cults and the valley's few twisted trees begin to droop strange fruit from Hempton Rope. Others plumb the crypts seeking Verhu, believing he, they can persuade him of other fates. Some simply, stu simpl some simply and stupidly leave gifts and sacrifice to a power they cannot comprehend. Gloom grows, Obscuring the world like an oil stained image. Mm. The calendar! Excellent. In this calendar. Let's, let's check. Do, 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 do. There we go. The calendar's on there. The calendar of Necrubel. The world trembles. One could feel it in ways sharp and subtle, mysterious, mysterious and clear. One by one, inevitable events demand at their place. Illustrating this, the game master, oh, that's me, rolls a dice each dawn. A result of a one activates one misery. The die is used to de uh, the die is used to determine by the oh, the die used uh, is determined by the GM group. Yes, because it doesn't say what dice value it is. So I could roll a d20, I could roll a d4, doesn't matter. The GM then rolls a d66 to determine which misery occurs. The same misery will not befall the world twice. Uh, when um, when will all this agony end? D100, 
But the end is nigh. God, a two. A D2 there. Terrible. All right. The seventh misery will always be 7-7, seven, seven, and the world finally dies. The seventh seal is broken for the seventh and final time. The game and your lives end here. Burn the book. Do not burn the books. Please don't burn books. Ooh, look at this, huh? Uh, Psalm 1. The city shall be made hollow. Of those who, who rest in hollowness, they shall not be seen. And the earth shall shake and be riven, and from the cracks shall rise a poisonous mist, and in ten days it will shroud the world. Of those who build mightily, stone by stone, so shall they fall, stone by stone. And the depths of the underworld shall bring forth flying spectres and crawling beasts. In their passage the worm grows fat, the vulture wary. Doubt is crowned, the loyal shall return their blade on those whose silver gave. And the blood cough shall spread like fire across the wastelands of the drought. Mm. Psalm 2. As at the beginning, so at the end. And all, all, all manner of fly and wasp shall fill the air, and the ground pale with maggots. Ugh. And from the spheres, a frost, born of the virgin crypt, and covering all. And in ten days, and one. And in ten days and one, the writings of sorcerers will be made pale as air, and the and glass shall become quartz, and she she shall see him grow stronger, and she reveals herself, and all shall be slain. Psalm three, at graven sock, sock, yeah, mm, possibly. The soil shall grow warm, and those who rest will be made to walk. Oh, that doesn't sound good. In the heart of the sarsh cash fog and dusk shall breathe beneath the waking trees. That which was hewn by man shall now hewn in turn, and hunger shall come among you among you. You shall dig roots and pull children from breast from the breast. The gaunt shall prey on the gaunt. The great shall be made poor, and the poor poorer still. There shall come rain unending, and the day shall be made night by its coming. Brother shall slay brother, and sister poison sister. Psalm 4. For five days and five nights mother's flesh shall be the cloak of demons. For, and for five, day, for five days and five nights shall fathers weep. Look to the west. Forth comes fire and a horde, and the kingdoms burn. The liar ark shall make knots of the hearts of men oh, sundering the strongest bonds behold now the endless sea where the leviathan causes waves as as oh, waves to be as mountains and the leviathan shall come among you children winterborn and fated to fall before snow both shall take both shall it take mm -mm. the lake and the the lake and the brook shall blacken, and the water become tar. The trees shall wither, shrivel, and die, and birds shall fall dead from the sky. In one night, all those who have not yet of seven years and seven days shall pass, born and unborn, and dawn shall give them life as eaters of men. Oh no, not good. The sky shall weep fire, and a great stone shall plummet as the city fallen. As a city fallen from heaven, its gift is death and madness is its herald. <sighs> and the last king and last queen shall wither to dust. Their wretched courts are devoured by wolves. Number six. You shall know the last day is come. The sun shall set and never rise. And the day shall be as night... Oh, and the, as... No. And day shall be as night and night as day you shall not sleep and neither shall you wake ah ah ah, ah quick <laughs> very, all very uplifting i agree I, uh, riveting god Where, where's the song so that's what i want to know <laughs> uh going back to pronunciation and thalia and thalia shall have her will and drink all color from the world those who walk on two legs shall be nameless as beasts of the field the earth shall vain bringing back black serpents f forth from within the earth and the unnamed enter the earth passing through the veil as it is sundered by De uh, Dejumon the left underling of Necrubel 
and the Psalm 7 the last. All praise Yetsebu, Yetsebu Nichu, the underworld's nightmare, a black disc which stands before the sun. All praise virtue, beaming with delight. All praise the fire which burns all, and and the darkness shall, sh shall swallow the darkness. Yeah, gosh, you know, what a sermon. <laughs> so I I assume when it talks about the D66 to determine which misery occurs, it, it must, yeah, it obviously is referring to these things, which is really cool. I really like that. So each of, you know, you could have up to 60, six, like, obviously depending on your thing, like you roll the one, depending on what it is, and then you can get one of these things. And so it means like, that, you know, the end is coming no matter what. You could just have a really bad set of what rolls, depending on your roll. I really like that. I think it's good. And, oh, really incredibly well written. All right, moving on. In this world, there are those who seek riches or redemption. Some say the apocalypse is escapable, that it may be even stopped. And there you walk in discord and despair. One hand holds a D <laughs> 2d6 times 10 silver, or S's, and the other holds a water skin and D4 days worth of food. Your soul and your silver are yours to own and equally easy to lose. To begin with, you are what you own. Oh, look at those images. Cracking. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Let the good times roll. Uh, so... So this is the there you go. I was gonna say it's all over the place in terms of like if you're trying to be like like oh which page should I look to for the character creation? So here, this is the main sort of rule. So you randomize your starting equipment on this page. So here, do, 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 do. so you do a d two a d six a d twelve a d twelve depending on what you get. Those are, that will be in your equipment. So yeah, so that's equipment. I'm guessing this is uh yeah this is weapons and that's armor. Super. And you roll your abilities, which is going to be on the next, or hopefully on the next page. It might change. Uh, roll your hit points and name your character if you wish. It will not save you. Uh, optional rules. Start by choosing or randomizing a class. So yes, there are classes in this game as well. Uh, it reminds me very much of Troika, I seem to remember. Follow that class's instructions for rolling on the equipment, weapons, or armor table. Uh, roll on the tables, 36 to 47, and then roll a number of omens, which is really as well so it's interesting because it already starts off with like compared to other games which talks about like oh here are the 12 classes but if you want to create your own you know it usually introduces the classes first or the architects first here it's like roll it all randomly first or if you want optionally you could have a class so i quite like that because it instantly makes it for me like i can see go oh well what if i want a homebrew a class if you see what i mean weapons oh so here's an example of <laughs> weapons sorry uh, ah, yes. Sorry, Fiona, I'm, I'm going... Oh, I was completely wrong. And ignore me. Yeah, this is all your equipment. These aren't separate ones. So yeah, so you roll D6, D12, and a D12 to get your little bits of equipment. And then weapons is a D10, or a D6 if you begin with a scroll. So here we've got, we've got all the different weapons. We've got femur, we've got a staff, we've got a short sword, a knife, we've got a warhammer. Sorry, it's a bit... Sorry, you caught red on you my friend uh <laughs> sword uh a bow d6 with a presence plus 10 arrows Un unarmed possibly so you don't get anything i guess you oh you probably always are unarmed don't you a flail <laughs> uh what's it did i miss nine somewhere sorry i'm rushing up and down seven flail 10 is oh it's got to be on the other side isn't it crossbow and then the this right hander is the 10 and there's your armor d4 no armor, <laughs> light, medium, heavy, cool, cool, cool. Scrolls will never work when wielding Zweihand weapons or medium, heavy armor. Fair enough. And here's even more equipment. Ah, so this is the kinds of equipment if you're going to buy stuff. They're all in silvers. Bear Trap is 20 silvers, just so you know. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever have this much money in this game. <laughs> or you can get beasts as well. Oh, looks like. Yeah, it costs, costs extra for the trained dog and the wild dog. Mm. Oh, but maybe I get a tame rat. That'd be quite fun. Very cool. All right, so that's all the those. Okay, abilities. Here we go. This is what I wanted to get to before we... Well, I'm probably going to finish in like the next 25 minutes, knowing me, because I've got stuff to do. Then, uh, so, let's see. So, abilities. So, we have agility, presence, strength, and toughness. Agility is, the, is basically... Defending, balancing, swimming, and fleeing. <laughs> Presence is perceive, aim, charm, wield powers. Hmm. 
Uh, strength is crush, look, strike, grapple, and then toughness is resist potion, oh, resist potion. Resist poison, cold, heat, and survive falling damage. Roll 3d6, and use the table on the right to generate each ability score that's minus 3 to plus 3. And sum, uh, the sum is not used in the character in the game once the character has created only the table value. Yep, so very much like, uh, well, uh, what's it called now? A standard, well, not standard, when you're rolling stats for, say, the other game, the big famous one with dragons, maybe in the old dungeon or something like that. Uh, let's see. I was going to say, how you, the most you can get, sorry, maths, is 18. So yeah, you get plus 3 is possibly your top stat as well. Uh, player characters not created with the optional classes can roll 4d6 and then drop the lowest dice value for two of the abilities. When the uh, character is later improved, later improved an ability that can never exceed plus 6 or minus 3. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, so if you are not using any of the classes it's going to come up with, you can use 4d6 instead. That's nice. I like that because it instantly says like make it random make it like they aren't you know you're not min maxing at all you're just going for it here's some difficulty ratings so from six that's like the lowest so simple people will laugh at you for failing it's still going to happen though and then 18 should not be possible tests are made against a difficulty rating to succeed you roll a d20 plus your ability so these things on the side here with a result equal to or greater than the difficulty rating creatures don't use abilities they just roll a d20 against the difficulty rating for example, find bear trap as a difficulty rating 14, or resist uh, red, po red poison is difficulty rating 12. Simple. All right, easy, straightforward. Carrying capacity. Oh God. Okay, I'm not a big fan of this sort of thing, but carrying capacity is your strength plus uh, eight normal size items without a problem. After that, start testing strength or and agility. Difficulty ratings increase by two. Uh, it is impossible to carry more than twice your strength plus eight fine 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 look at that look at that image though see oh, so good hit points with a beautiful heart mm, hopefully <laughs> you, you got the trigger warnings uh hit points begin with toughness plus d8 in worst case one hit point but never less that's true because you could be it could be let's see yeah you could really be screwed and only have like uh th at least four Minus three, dear oh dear, and that's yeah, and that'd be rolling it as well. Oh, scary! Zero hit points, you're broken. Negative hit points, you're dead. Violence, hooray! Ah, oh, so this is combat. Combat is one d six. You roll roll a d six. One three. Enemies go first. Four four six. PCs go first. Yep, I like that. That's simple. You can just be like, okay, you go first. It's like almost like a, you can even do it as a toying cost. To be honest with you. Agility plus d6 for individual initiative, or to determine who goes first within the group. Fine, easy enough. Uh, players roll for both their attacks and defences. Creatures and enemies do not roll for dice and combat. Thank you. Uh, so if you're doing a melee check, it's strength, dr rating 12. Range is also dr rating 12. Uh, dr rating. Difficulty rating 12, which is presence instead. Then the old defence is agility difficulty rating 14 if you fail to if you fail the enemy hits you enemies hit once per round unless noted otherwise makes sense easy enough when you're broken fall unconscious for d4 rounds and awaken with d4 hp mm -hmm. roll a d6 one to five broken or sever limb six has lost eye can't act for d4 rounds and then become active for d4 hp hemorrhage <laughs> yeah, it's all it's all uh, it's always uh Brutal, isn't it? He's like, uh, you know, you could be alright, not. Um, AJ says, encumbrance is usually the first rule to ignore <laughs> when I'm running a game. <laughs> it's true. Like, again, I've got to be honest. <sighs> From what I've seen of this game, you're not going to live long enough to take something back. Either you get to the treasure and it's going to be so big you're going to drop everything else, probably your weapons, it's that or the other, or you're carrying it between, I don't know, three of you. Or... Or, or you're gonna die. I just it's either the one or the other. I find. <laughs> uh, hemorrhage, death in D for two hours unless treated. All tests are D uh, difficulty rating D, uh, sixteen in the first hour and then eight, eighteen in the last hour. <gasps> Whoa! And then four is just dead. <laughs> and then oh, all the damage I'm guessing is the same. It's just the yeah. You didn't have any stats for this. 
yeah, you don't have any stats. Fantastic. Yeah, so all it's just like hit it. You just got to get over these uh, these ratings and then you get the damage here. So crit. Uh, yeah, so, so sorry. Crit, natural 20. So attack with double damage. Armor protection is also reduced by one tier. So cool. So you got first tier, second tier, third. I wonder what that actually. Defense PC gets a free attack. So you get natural 20, right? Oh, I guess it's tier related to weapons. Sorry. Mm, this is equipment. There you go, some tier ones there, I see. Maybe? Present. Doesn't really say. I'm sure someone will tell me. If in doubt, double damage. <laughs> A fumble, on the other hand, is... Uh, oh, the weapon breaks or is lost. Defense, yeah, the PC takes double damage and the armor is reduced by one tier. When armor is damaged, penalties to strength and agility tests are not modified. Armor reduced be below first tier is ruined, ruined, and can't be repaired. For armor repair costs, see equipment page. Ah, okay. How long is a round? A round is long enough time uh, enough time to make an attack or use a power or traverse a normal sized room. <laughs> now, if we were talking about say London sized rooms, would that mean you could traverse two or three London sized rooms? size rooms in a, a round usually there are 10 rounds in one minute so six seconds very good oh look look aj it's you and me <laughs> uh, you gotta laugh haven't you otherwise you cry uh rest catch your breath and have a drink restore d4 hitch points uh a full night's sleep restores d6 Without food or drink, no hit point is restored when resting, and after two days, a starving PC loses d4 hit points a day. An infected character does not benefit from resting. Instead, 2d6 HP is lost daily. Uncanny, lol. <laughs> oh, hey, 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 Dead Toothbrush. How you doing? How are you doing? How's your, um, how's your recording? I hope you had a good one. I've been editing a certain Howard today and we'll send you the episode later. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. I was supposed to write some more of that, actually, <laughs> to actually give you a less, uh, say, D&D version. Uh, but yeah, I'll be glad to hear the result and see what we can do to make it better. <laughs> uh, you just joined us for Mork Walk. I'm just slowly going for it for... Um, I don't know if you know, Dan, but uh, there's the end of CM coming up. I think you're going. <laughs> I've got to learn the bloody rules to bloody Mork Walk, haven't I? Uh, reaction 2d6. Uh, oh, I guess this is, this is the monster, right? When meeting creatures whose reaction is uncertain. Tag yourself. Which one are you today? <laughs> I was almost friendly earlier <laughs> when I couldn't teach my class. <laughs> almost friendly. Morale. Most enemies will not fight to the last drop of blood. Roll for morale if the leader is killed, half the group is eliminated, or a single enemy only has a third of its HP left. If you roll greater than a creature's morale value with 2d6, it is demoralised. <laughs> roll d6 to see if the enemy stays or flees. So surrenders or flees, sorry. God. <laughs> oh, what a great image. Oh, wow. That was, this is me now. That was me earlier when I was trying to get onto Zoom. <laughs> getting better or worse ah oh, so this will be the advancement stuff again i assume you can do a campaign in mortborg however it feels like it's very hard, difficult to do the game master decides when a character should be improved it can be after completing a scenario killing mighty foes or bringing treasure home when this happens the following things occur more hp uh d roll d uh, 60 10 if the result is greater equal to or greater than your current maximum uh, HP, increase it by d6. Oh, don't give me that. Roll 2 d6, 10. What if I got 60? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, right, roll the d6. And then it's like, one. Oh, give them that. Give them the, the thing. I don't know. Uh, left in the debris, you should find a d6. Uh, oh, some, some treasure after you um, level up. Ability changes. Roll a d6 against every ability. Results equal to or greater than the ability. Increase it by one. Okay. To a maximum of plus six. Uh, I yeah, that must be the um yeah, that must be your actual like modifier rather than the actual number that you rolled to get that modifier. Uh, result oh, wait, what I didn't read that last line. Results below the ability, decrease it by one. Oh Morgborg, you're so cruel. I love it. <laughs> uh, uh 
I think you could be a bit louder. Still got your max and can't hear you clearly. Oh, okay. I will uh, change my input if I can, or even just get myself closer to the mic. It's on full, so I think I'm just being quiet today. I have to check into this though. I did. I've taken the cap off it though. Mm, I'll come back to it in the break maybe. Uh, AJ says that's a cool mechanic. It reminds me a lot of the morale in in Warhammer. Yes, I agree to the. Uh, morale there. Mm -hmm -hmm. Powers. A few so-called powers are known uh, and they are usually found written in scrolls. Roll presence uh, plus d4 every morning to determine how many times you can use powers that day. Uh, choose from your available scrolls. When, uh, when reading a scroll, test presence uh, difficulty rating 12. If you succeed, the power is activated and you subtract from your daily total. Okay, so everything's a d12. Fine, fine, fine. If you fail, the power doesn't work and you lose 2 d2 HP and you become dizzy for the next hour. <laughs> always. Uh, during this time, powers will almost always fail in the worst possible way. Uh, the GM decides the effect on a crit or a fumble, but on page 44 is an optional table of arcane catastrophes. Oh, well, we're going to check that out, aren't we? Unclean scrolls. No. Let's see what we've got. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Palms of palms open. Palms open the south ga southern gate. A ball of fire hits two D creatures, dealing D eight damages per creature. Tongue. Is that tongue of Chris? Hang on. Go to the bare bones. <laughs> we will. We will discover what this is. Do, 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 do. I love this. I. I am always a big fan of having. Um, text versions as well as actual uh, 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 I was going to say normal versions not really actual full art versions Just it's just a little bit easier oh Iris it says there, let's move in a little bit enhance, enhance, enhance Iris, yeah if I go back to it of course it's Iris <laughs> a creature of your choice is confused for ten minutes I mean that is ironic is it not <laughs> Telekinesis, fine. Lucy fires Leviathan. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Lucy fires Leviathan. Ho hover for presence. Hover for presence. Oh, it's ho you hover, right? <gasps> oh, whoop. okay. Uh, Damon of the capillaries. Oh gosh, suffocates for D four six rounds, losing D four health per round. How do I pronounce that? Foul psychopomp. Summon either skeletons or zombies. <sighs> oh, that one at the top, death. All creatures within 30 feet lose a total D, uh, 4d10 HP. Oh, brutal. So those are the unclean ones, and then you've got sacred scrolls. That's what we've got here. A creature of your choice gains 2d6 extra HP for 10 rounds. Okay. That's, oh, I see. It's so a good thing. Oh, these are all health, right? It's, yeah, these are all like buffs, aren't they? Oh, whispers past the gate. Ask three questions to a deceased creature. <laughs> Hermit, hermetic step. If you find all traps in in your path for d10 minutes. Hmm. All good stuff. <gasps> she. Okay, so this is the first. That's the first two-headed basilisk. Lucy and Ark. I'm gonna. Maybe I can, hang on, it's a two page view, there you go, you can see the full, oh look at that, cracking, absolutely cracking, get that on a postcard, huh? The basilisk demands, so here's a list of demands that they could make, and maybe for as a quest hook for say, uh, blood day bread, it does look like a bit like, which one's Paul, which one's Prue? <laughs> Uh, a troll's heart val vowels. Vowel? Yeah, not values. <laughs> the troll's like, I just want everyone to do well. <laughs> a child born with a third eye. The rear molar of the gluttonous. Mm. And then, oh, this is the omens things from before. Uh, clearly the eyes of the other powers are upon you. Eldritch watchers are 
the tangled fates of, of alternate worlds. Call it luck if you like. Every class gains a number of omens. If you play without classes, every uh, every character begins with two d2 omens. When depleted, roll the character's designated die. D2 if playing without glass uh, glasses. <laughs> classes and regain that many omens after resting at least six hours. And then use for omens to either deal max damage with one attack, re-roll your dice, lower the damage dealt to you by d6, neutralize a crit or a hot fumble, probably quite good in this game, or lower the test DR rating by, uh, I keep saying DR rating, difficulty rating by four, minus four, pretty good. Ah, some optional tables. Trauma, a bad childhood, hidden history, or twisted fate attending your birth has already shaped you. Ooh. Ah, oh, so these are almost like um, personality tables, I guess, or backstory tables. So if I wanted to roll, uh, roll twice, two, uh, so 2d20. Pick yourself. Which one are you? <laughs> Probably uh, always worried. Absolutely always worried. And vindictive. Absolutely. Those are me. Broken bodies. Oh, wow. Let's see what we've got. Uh, a long, long tangled hair. At least one cockroach in residence. <laughs> uh, corpulent, cor corpse, corpulent, ravenous drooling. Oh, where did you get that image from? <laughs> That's all I want to say. Nails cracked and black. May about, may, may about to drop off. Decaying teeth. God, my uh, oh, ideal woman there, you know? What's a D20? So what are these ones then? Oh, bad habits. <laughs> these are almost like flaws, aren't they? Uh, what's uh, can't, Unable to get to the point. Has, has Have never actually finished a story. That's definitely me. Your best friend is a skull. You carry it with you. Uh, you tell it everything. You trust no one. You trust no one more. You pick your nose so deep it bleeds. Hmm. You laugh hysterically at your own jokes, which you then explain in detail. Oh, wow, I feel very seen. Let's move on. <laughs> Troubling tale. The whole group can share the same backstory, or groups within or groups within the groups can share a tale. Or the GM can give, give history to a seemingly mundane character. Roll a d20 or throw a knife at the page on the right. Uh... Okay, cool. Oh, I see that you've got... I like how it's so different. Again, all these different ways of creating characters or creating, like, story hooks or anything like that is quite cool. Like, in the sense, I know it's dice rolling, right? But, again, it's so different. These There are all these tables are just literally D20 tables, right? But they're written in such a different way. Or well, not written. They're, they're sort of designed and sort of graphically put on the paper in different ways. Sorry, my words have gone completely tonight. Let's see what we can get, though, on this paper. We're about halfway through. Very very recently murdered a close relative. Very recently. Much close. <laughs> Violence forced you into the wilderness. You think waving trees are whispering. You talk to it. You talk to, scream at, attack trees. Hmm. Burn or be burned is the fate you accept. Your flesh heals twice as fast, but your companions twice as slow. You see a many-eyed guardian angel. Oh, man. Biblical angels are just the scariest things, if you look at images of them. God, look at... Oh, wow. I don't know about your eyes. Ooh. Arcane catastrophes. Read it wrong, you illiterate fool. <laughs> Read it wrong, you illiterate fool. Fair enough. So, yeah. So, if you fail casting a spell, uh, you get one of these uh, results. Oh, what's that one? Did if you roll a two, you feel fine. It's fine. You postulate with a magical STD. Those intimate with you will die of plague within D four days, then rise as woeful weeping zombies who track you down in your dreams before finding you in reality. Oh no! <laughs> Not the ex lovers coming back to haunt you. You've got a long list of ex lovers. Around you falls the unending snow of black ash, which only you and the mad can perceive. Water, water sickens you from this day on. Only ash, soot, or burnt remains can quench your thirst. Awful. 
Your skin tatters like paper, your flesh melts like wax, and your inside oh your intestines, sorry, bloat like balloons, bursting and falling out until all that is left is a walking, talking skeleton. Happy birthday. <laughs> oh, at a, on a twenty, perhaps it's for the best. He emerges from the shadows. At least your suffering is short, almost instantaneous, as the two headed basilisk devours you. Light itself despises you. If you gaze upon a candle or lamp or torch, it goes out. <laughs> Cracking. And here are some of the optional classes. We've got a, a D6. So we've got only six classes here. So we've got the Fanged Deserter. You have 30 or so friends who never let you down. Your teeth. <laughs> Disloyal, deranged, or simply uncontrollable. Any group that didn't boot you out uh, left anyway. But your parliament of teeth, enormous protruding thick and sharp have always been your allies so you get like a, a special ability bite tack you've got some memory wings there uh you've got if you begin with one then re-roll wait what was oh i see i see you roll a d6 and you get your you get one of these special things right i'm guessing so sorry i'm looking over here i'm looking i'm looking Normal agility tests are, are ratings 14, etc. Oh, so you maybe get special rules depending on the class. That's really cool. You also begin with one of the following. Oh, wow. Oh, I see. So if you start with a, sc with a scroll, then re-roll or eat it or use it as toilet paper. <laughs> Let's have a look at a couple of these. Wizard's teeth. Four weird teeth rattle within a blackened pouch. Before battle, roll a d6 for each one. For every six, one of your attacks deals maximum damage. Nice. And we've got the gutter-born scrum. Oh, terrifying. No, thank you. What do they do? An ill star smiled... Ooh, get rid of this. Get rid of that. An ill star smiled upon your birth. Poverty, crime, and bad parenting didn't help either. In your community, an honest day's work was never an option. Not that you ever tried. What are you? Some sort of mug? <laughs> Uh, a razor blade and a moonless knight are worth a week a week of work, of chump work. Uh, these are the things you get. Some speciality stuff there as well. Some bad birth memories, of course. Every time you use an omen there is a 50% chance it is not spent. Nice. Whoa. Esoteric hermit. The stone of your cave is one with the stars, silent and perfection. Now the chaos of a fallen world disturbs your rituals, and the core of night uh, grows blacker than your uh, cavern's gloom. Irritating. <laughs> oh, these are great. I love these little descriptions. I appreciate I'm not going through all of them, it's just because I'm aware of time. I have to go off in about 10 minutes, I think. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. No lower back tame on that table though, so it's not all bad. <laughs> true that, true that. Uh, Bard of the Undying, you learn your melodies through the other world. The music of your harp gives a d4 on reaction rolls. Hmm. Wretched royalty. Oh, let's look at this image. Oh, what a cracking image. Wretched royalty. Bow down only by the the me oh bow down only by the memories of your own lost glory. You could never submit to anyone else, not you of noble blood. Uh, in brackets, not that you ever expect any of these peons to understand the depths of your sorrows. Painfully average, you are just no abilities. <laughs> roll a d8 on the weapons table. Roll a d4 on the armor table. But re-roll any if you receive any heavy armor. You begin with two of the following instead. What's it say here? Things were going so well. Oh, so that's your um. Oh, that's probably the reason why you're um you're out on your look. Uh, what's this one? The barbaristas, uh, is magical, intelligent, arrogant, and vain. He can also talk. If you can persuade him to care, the barbarista occasionally adds plus two persuasion to presence tests involving logic and intellect. The horse may be smarter than you, and it is quite aware of this. Oh, it's the incredible horse. Oh, oh, excellent. 
Excellent, excellent. The snake skin gift, an expensive sandalwood box bound in snake skin. It, contain, it contains, sorry, a seemingly ordinary dagger wrapped in silk. The dagger does d4 damage, but on a one, the target dies immediately of deadly po poison weeping from the blade. Hmm. Ooh, is that, does that say heretical priest? I'm going to just double check. Uh, remove. Ooh, let's, let's get out of here. Get out of here. Do, 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 do. Optional classes. There you go. Gutterborn. Esoteric Hermit. Wretched Loyalty. Heretical, heretical Priest. <laughs> There's a game in improv called... Um, well, it's called Character Hotspot, but unofficially it's called Clingy, Ple Clingy Priest. And the idea is that you have to... to you, it's about getting into characters, right? So you give someone an, a, a, a verb or a adjective and then a um a career or a uh occupation and often you get clingy priest is the one that always comes up apparently <clears throat> and you then you have to do a monologue as that thing so this is the same like wretched loyal uh, wretched royalty heretical priest <laughs> Hunted by the two-headed basilisk uh, of the one true faith, this heretic can be found ra uh, raving in ruins, do, 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 do. Uh, trip <laughs> traipsing endlessly down dusty roads and desecrating cathedrals by night. Oh, that's stolen mitra. Wearing this holy hat, <laughs> excellent, the priest's vile body fades, becoming hard to hit in combat. Defense, uh, de uh, Difficulty rating 10. If pulled over the ears outside of battle, the priest becomes nearly invisible, testing stealth, uh, stealth against a difficulty rating of 8. What's that? This crucifix can be used in encounters with the undead as well as lesser trolls and goblins. Check morale to see if the creatures bow or kind of remove themselves. Ooh. Cool. And then finally we've got a cultist... Herb, herb master, occult herb master, born of the mushroom, raised in the glade, watched by the eye of the moon in a silver black pool. Oh, I, I could have a bit more of that, but look at it. Look at those masks. Terrifying. <laughs> oh, and there's a selection of creatures as well. We've got goblin there, Seth the goblin. Oh, bent scum. Zukuma, the berserker, rat, the wraith. God, that's a cracking image, that, of the wraith. Wow. Got a lich. Got a, a blood-drenched skeleton, you know, instead of your normal dry skeletons. Oh, God, those tro that that's huge. Look at that. Look how big that is. That, that, ah. Oh. And then a zombie as well. Lady Porcelain, no thank you. <laughs> it's like Lady Marmalade, uh, no, Lady Marmalade, but worse. I think grotesque. So you got a nice little bit of beastry there as well. God, these images are cracking, aren't they? Uh, outcast followers, what does it say there? Uh, money might cross hands, but these weirdos don't cost silver to hire. Vagrants and refugees, driven by loneliness, they just want somewhere to belong. Which is like exactly why they often break into a run and disappear, usually at the most critical moments. <laughs> cool. Alright, so you've got some followers there as well. So we've got an earthbound, a wild wickhead, a pale one, a prowler. And then, and then you have the adventure. I think this is yeah the inductory dungeon crawl, which I won't spoil for people. But it goes. I'm going to have a quick look though. This is the thing I do love about this adventure. Again, I'm not going to look at it in too much detail. They have deliberately. Here's the main map, right? But then on every page, it tells you. You know, if you're referring to the room and the number, they've got the little mini room at the top. And I just thought that was absolutely cracking when I first saw that. Oh, it just makes it a lot easier to work out. Because I, I was always going back to a map. Like D and D does that a lot, where you're constantly flipping between pages. Here, you can just see where you are on the mini map, and like, oh, it's just so much more accessible. Absolutely love that. And yeah, and there you go. That is a very quick. Oh, sorry, my my <laughs> my bad. You've also right at the end, you've got some more adventure hooks. Well, even more reasons to risk one life. Um, like over a hundred reasons, and a few other. Uh, 
you know, distinct features, sample rooms for making your own dungeon crawl as well. Like, look at these tables. So many tables. You've got an index as well. And then finally you've got a little uh, quick start sheet. Um, sorry, quick reference sheet, sorry, here as well. And there you go. That is it. That is more. Well, that is incredible. Like a whistle stop tour. I appreciate. Um, what do I think of it overall? Ooh, she says, trying to put it back to single page view. Um, I think as a system itself, really straightforward to put it together. You can come up with creatures like cre sorry, you can come up with characters like that, right? And it's easy to recreate a character or to create new characters if your character dies. But I will say as well, they've also got their character generator as well. I can come up with stuff que quickly. They've got their dungeon generator. There's, there's a lot here. And it, so really it comes down to the setting itself, the flavor of the setting. Like I absolutely, I'm intrigued by it, right? I think maybe there's a bit of a false impression about, because it's not horror horror, right? I, I say this as someone who's been reading Cult Divinity Lost recently, and that's really bad in the sense of like, there's a lot of stuff in there that it's like, hmm, how can I put this into a stream game? Or how can I right, record this as a podcast that people will be able to listen to and not have to maybe take breaks that often? I think Morkborg, it, it is definitely vibes, right? It is definitely vibes. Um, and I just, yeah, there's, there's just something about it. So it's not too, I think like it's, it's edgy, but it's not on the horror scale per se for me, which is fine. I think that each to their own, right? But I love the artwork. I love the setting. As always, I wish I was better at pronunciations, but that means I wish there was pronunciation guides for these things. Otherwise, you're just going to have people like me uh, with no accent and just butchering the names when we want to be able to use these names and be confident in using them and not just muck them up and be worried about them. So that's the only thing I'd say on that front. But otherwise, that's good. Uh, love a quick reference. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, I'm always a big fan of, like, instead of giving someone, like, here is a whole 300-page book, here is two pages you need to look at. You know, that's just always easy from that. But there you go, there you go. So that is Morkborg. I will quickly uh, type in so where you can get it. Obviously, they've got their own little little website. Little website uh, with all the stuff on it. So if you want, like, a the Bare Bones edition, which is just the text, the uh, text on it, uh, text uh, text only version with one page of art do check that out uh, i wonder what the adventure looks like by the way if i go to it there's a sample rooms ah. does it have the adventure i don't think it has the adventure sorry <laughs> i mean because there's hang on so those are the tables to risk one more life there's but there is the followers I don't think the adventure's in that one. How interesting. So yes, yeah, so you can just get the text only thing which doesn't have the adventure in. Which maybe makes sense. You don't you know, if you're paying for the full book then you get the full experience perhaps. But just a quick reference guide to get the bare bones edition and it might be a little bit easy to read. Um very good. Uh the transmissions, really interesting. Thanks, Fiona. Thank you. No, I really appreciate uh coming along to have a quick watch. I appreciate again. I, it's been a little while since I've done this and I'm a bit all over the place anyway and pronunciations I've never been my strong point especially on the end of a Sunday but thank you so much for watching uh, as always let's go back to cam only there we go as always if you uh, want to find out more different RPGs uh, she says looking over to the chat as if that's going to help uh, you can check out my podcast what am I rolling which is a twice monthly RPG one shot podcast um, we've not done more book there yet uh, i'm sure i can get my co-host hamilton to run as a game or so speaking of if you are at mcm london this october so the end of october the 27th 28th 29th there will be a mockbook game uh which is uh, demon slayer inspired if you've watched or read any of the anime around demon slayer we're doing a game which uses the Morkborg rules on that on the haunted house stage uh with hamilton running it i'll be there <laughs> I'll be there as one of the players and we've also got Taylor from Backwater Bastards we've got uh, Chloe and Will from a rendezvous with Destiny there as well and we're going to be there the whole weekend um, doing lots of panels and stuff like that as well so if you want to see us run a version of the game for a live audience come along and check that as well will it be recorded? who knows um, we'll take the recorder, we'll find out um, but again it's one of those games where I'm like I've interviewed, I have had the pleasure of interviewing uh, Pele Nielsen and Johan Noor for other things as well as Mortborg and it's one of those things where I'm like oh, I need to run this game I think I think it 
I don't want to say it's underrated because I know people know of it, but I don't think people actually play it. Play it. Uh, if you want to check out a limited series of Mortborg, which is done with very, very high production values. Again, I'm constantly going to be dropping uh, Hamilton's name in this, but there is Theatre Macabre. Uh, Hamilton ran a four-episode series uh, with his own sort of uh, flavour some to it. It is fully produced, it is fully, like, costumed. It's really worth checking out. So if you type in Theatre Macabre on the Dragon Dragon T4C YouTube, that's where it'll be. I'll put a link into, into the show notes once I've done this. Uh, so do check that out as well. Anything else I've got coming up? I don't think so, but if you fancy chatting with us, uh, Chris Hoffman says, thank you for your lovely stream. Well, thank you for being here. Again, I very much, this was very much last minute, and you can tell everything's all a bit, everything's all a bit weird. Uh, will that work? We'll find out about, we'll find out about hotkeys. Well, it does. If you want to talk to us more about tabletop RPGs and go, Fiona, here is a pronunciation guide for all the things in what book. Uh, come join our Discord. Uh, the link is in the chat. Um, at least for the Twitter, sure, it's there. Um, it you know, it, it, come check it out there and come talk to us. Uh, we'd love to have you there as well. All right, I think that's everything. Got to sign off. Uh, I might be back this week. I'm gonna have a look at my schedule again and see if I can do some more of these streams because I do miss doing them. And I'll see if I can sort out the audio as well because I, I need. I, it's been so long since I've done this, so it's always a little bit of chitty chat. Anyway, have a good rest of your Sunday, you folks. Uh, thank you so much for being here and I hope you buy Mortborg perhaps I don't know tell them tell them I sent you <laughs> sorry I'm looking I'm looking for the off button I am going I'm going thanks enough Ooh, thanks enough guys <laughs>